Hey there everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be looking back at Billy Click, Creech Battler, this series of uh, young reader novels that I did back in the day, boy, almost 15 years ago. It is, um, you know, all text, really, with just occasional illustrations. And what I want to do is go through and look at uh, every one of the illustrations that I created for this series. I'll say, first of all, that this logo, let's go ahead and zoom in on that. This logo was of my design. Um, I've always felt that each series should have a distinctive logo of one kind or another uh, so as to set it apart. And um, So yeah, I remember playing around with making the L a little taller here, you know, to make it something, make it a little more distinctive somehow. Uh, and uh, so yeah, there you go. That uh, The artwork itself, the style is a little almost like Cubist looking. I was, I was trying to do something different <clears throat> uh, with this series to set it apart from my previous work. I don't know if I really <laughs> like this style uh, as I look back at it, um, but it's always worth experimenting, pushing yourself in new directions. Now, here's uh, something that's interesting. When you do <clears throat> illustrations, such as this one, which is the uh, opening uh, spread, you know, the sort of title spread, um, you may find that your illustration gets cropped a little bit. And uh, so look at this, uh, what you see in the book, and then look at what I actually created, um, intending, of course, for all of this other stuff to be seen, such as this house up here, uh, quite a lot of grass down here, trees over here. Look what happened when <laughs> I handed the work off. No house, let's, let's go ahead and crop that house out of there. Uh, and then, yeah, the, no trees on the other side of this uh, house over there. And that can be a little bit heart heartbreaking, frankly, when uh, when someone decides to uh, crop your artwork so heavily. But uh, I, you, know, you live and you learn, and you, and you probably learn not to put anything that you're too much in love with uh, near the edge of the illustration. I, I, I always want to know where is the text, you know? So I designed this so as to show them, look, you know, I've planned this out, you know, and this is the, this is the, the gutter, I think they call it, you know, the spine of the book. Um, I never want an illustration, I, I never want him to be sort of like falling into the spine of the book. I don't want them to run out of space for the title. Uh, you want to be thinking about all that stuff when you're making these plans. Uh, let's move on to the next one. This would be the uh, chapter one spread. Billy Click is this um, teenage boy who um, finds that his parents are members of a secret monster battling organization. It was a little bit inspired by the movie Spy Kids, which uh, ironically I had not actually seen, but I understood the, the basic concept of it. And uh, I felt that my publisher was looking for something along those lines. And so I created this story, and I call it like Spy Kids meets um, Men in Black, because uh, Men in Black, of course, featured aliens living among us. This one is more like uh, monsters really exist. Uh, they're not living among us. They're sort of hiding out there in the world, and we need an organization like the Men in Black to uh, um, control them, you know, keep the world safe. And uh, so he discovers that his parents are members of the, spoiler alert, members of this organization. But the whole start of the book involves um, him finding clues and sort of digging around the house. Uh, this, uh, let me go ahead and remove the plastic covering here. This one ended up being quite involved. I wanted to show how he had gone into his parents' bedroom and was looking for receipts and different things that might prove what they were up to. And, uh, yeah, kind of a detail fest here as I went through. There's actually a record cover here for a band that I invented in the story called Abstruse Muse. <laughs> Any of you want to name your band Abstruse Muse, have at it. Let's see how it works out for you. But yeah, it was fun sort of showing how he laid waste to his parents' bedroom looking for any, uh, any clues as to what they were up to uh, in their spare time that they'd been kind of keeping secret from him. Uh, we'll move on to the next one here. This one a smaller illustration, only meant to uh, fill the bottom part of one page. Um, the dog is an interest. I won't give it away quite yet. It will, I think you'll eventually um, find out as I go through and show all the illustrations. Uh, there is a secret relating to the dog, but the dog is trying to stop him from um, 
I think he actually makes a phone call to the organization at one point and starts to get clues as to, to what's going on. Um, I should say in terms of what <clears throat> uh, materials I'm using here, this is all just sort of black and gray watercolor uh, with uh, ink pens and maybe a little bit of pastel, a little uh, chalky pastel and of course my beloved white gouache for these white highlights. Uh, interestingly I chose to use what was then the latest uh, form of iMac uh, but it <laughs> it only lasted for a couple of years. Does anyone remember these? Uh, it was this interesting design that they'd come up with and uh, almost like within a year of this book coming out it was already outdated. I don't think anyone bought that version of the iMac sadly or very few uh, compared to the later iterations. This one is sort of interesting and I put a note on it uh, to help the people understand the importance of how this corner of the bedroom is supposed to line up with uh, the book. And let's see if I can find real quick this uh, how this was supposed to actually be published. And here we go. My idea was that the, if the corner of the room lined up with the spine of the book, you might actually have an effect of the of the walls of the room. You know what I mean? Have this sort of 3D effect. I don't know how well it actually works uh, in terms of uh, making you feel a three-dimensional effect, but I thought I'd give it a try anyway. I'd seen uh, David Small had uh, done something sort of like that, my uh, mentor uh, from college, and uh, I thought, let's see if it works. And uh, in my case, I don't know if it did, but it was it was fun to try. And uh, you could, you know, if you ever get published and you you know that your illustration is going to spread across the spine uh, of the book, um, why not play around with that? See, you know, certainly don't get anything in there that's important to you because it's going to disappear uh, into that space between the pages. I haven't looked at these illustrations for quite a long time. I sure did put a lot of time into it. I mean, looking at it, I can tell that this was... Uh, I was eager for this uh, book series to be a big success and sometimes you think you can purchase success by way of effort. Um, uh, like, the more hours I put into this, the more I will be guaranteed to have a hit. Uh, and it didn't really work out that way. But uh, Again, you see me sort of playing around with this strange angular way of like drawing trees and things. I was, I was trying not to be too literal-minded uh, in the different stuff that I drew, but I've always been sort of fascinated by light and shadow, and you can see me, um, <clears throat> you know, getting the light source here and getting the shadows coming off of the uh, of the van in this illustration, I'm trying to get a sort of a moody look for that one. Here we move on to the chapter six spread. This is, um, this one's sort of interesting because you can see me leaving space for text over here, um, and uh, Billy is kind of grilling his parents, like, "What are you? What's going on with you guys? You guys have been living a secret life, you know." And uh, he, I want in on it. Basically, he's like, "I want to be part of the the family business of battling monsters," um, and uh, so yeah, you know, it's basically everything I need to say about that. I wonder how this worked out in terms of the uh, leaving space for the text. I wonder if they had a crop fest with this one and cropped out a lot of my artwork. You never know. Here it is. No, it turned out <clears throat> turned out pretty much as intended. Leaving that space for the text to flow in there. Um, but when you're creating um, books like this you do have to sort of be aware of um, how much uh, space needs to be left for text, especially children's picture books, which uh, I unfortunately never have uh, done one, but you certainly have to be aware of where the text is going to go. Here's the little detail I snuck in here for the uh, breakfast cereal. Frosted sugar beasts. <laughs> Seems a little, a little on the nose there, Curly. I love piffling. Uh, Piffling was the name of the town. Piffling, Indiana, I think uh, I called it the, the town where he lived. And now let's move on to one more. I think we're going to do like half of the illustrations in this video and, and the remaining half in the next one. This is maybe the best 
in my opinion, out of all of the initial illustrations, this one in which we realized that the parent's van can go airborne. A little bit, little bit of a James Bond sort of a thing going on there. Um, but I had fun trying to convey this aerial view, you know, of the countryside. And um, uh, hopefully this popping forward by way of this black outline. Uh, and I didn't use any black outlines uh, on the landscape below. But that was the, the goal, to make it look like it really was way up in the sky. And if you look closely enough, you can see Billy looking out the rear view mirror, amazed. My parents have a flying van. This is so awesome. <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah, I think this probably, out of all the ones in the book, this is the one that I'd say is sort of suitable for framing. You know, it turned out um, probably better than I even hoped for. Uh, but certainly better than some of the other ones, which Looking back, I'm not so thrilled with this one's pretty good, though. This is when he first goes into this sort of Men in Black-like organization, the Creech Battlers, and as he's walking down this hallway, he nearly gets grabbed by a alien in an aquarium. Uh, I guess I'll show first how he's getting grabbed around the neck here. And then if we go back, you can see the source of the strange multi-eyed creatures. Um, this part certainly was very heavily influenced by Men in Black. There's that, you know, when you first enter the organization and see all the aliens and all of that stuff. Um, so, yeah, that one, that one turned out all right as well, I think. I got two of my better illustrations, one after the other. Then, as they go inside, I think I have this scene, I can barely remember it now, but they get kind of chewed out by the boss. Um who I named Mr. Vrifni. <laughs> Vrifni. And uh, the whole reason for Vrifni was to create a joke where he, the, the boy Billy Click had trouble pronouncing it. And as they leave, he says, Thank you, Mr. Very Funny. <laughs> Instead of Vrifni. Oh, oh, so funny. Oh, so clever, Mr. Crilly. Um, but that was, uh, again, this is another one where I think I had the idea of the spine of the book would be sort of the corner of the room, and we'd, uh, we'd get a slightly three-dimensional feeling there. But almost every one of these illustrations had loads of details in them. I was really eager to um, impress people by way of uh, detail uh, in these illustrations, and even to this day I continue doing that sort of thing. People have seen um, Brody's Ghost can attest to that. They're, periodically I just gotta do a detail fest. I thought that was interesting over here, this little, I don't know if it's a model or taxidermy of some sort of strange little alien creature uh, underneath a glass covering. And we're coming up towards the end. Oh, here it is. This is where I have the big reveal. I guess I'll try to, let's zoom in so that we don't give it away too quickly. But this is the dog, right, that uh, we introduced earlier on. And wait a second, that's no ordinary dog. It's Orizamo. <laughs> and he finds out that this um, Scottish terrier that he's been living with all his life is actually one of the creatures, but one of the good ones, and becomes his sort of sidekick. Uh, you can see me trying to get in a lot of the elements that I perceived as being popular in children's stories. Oh, you gotta have a sidekick animal creature of some kind, but at least uh, I thought it was kind of fun to have the dog be a creature, a creature in disguise. And this might be the second to last, is it? Yeah, okay, here we go. And finally we arrive at the exotic um, overseas location of the story, and that is the Taj Mahal. Uh, the whole rest of the story takes place in India. And um, I'd had the pleasure of visiting India, some of you may know, uh, and I was inspired by my own trip to the Taj Mahal to, to include this scene. But of course, I'm, I'm sure I got some good photo reference, but still was trying to get a little bit of that cartoony style in there that I had been, you know, that I decided to use for this series. Rather than drawing actual trees, they all look like weird, <laughs> I don't know, cubist trees or something like that. 
And I believe that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Let me know what you thought of it. I hope you enjoyed seeing these uh, illustrations from quite a bit earlier in my career. I haven't done a prose fiction book um, since the second of the Billy Click books. And uh, I guess that will be uh, something I'll show in another video where this time uh, he went to India in the second book, uh, he went to China. And unfortunately, that was the end of the series. It never got beyond two books. But I think it's time for me to wind down this uh, video. I really want to thank you all for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.